Yeah. Viewers, good morning, my fans. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nati Bruzi the Bog. I'm an actor. I'm a scriptwriter. I'm a director. I'm a producer. As a matter of fact, I'm a filmmaker. Today, in this episode, I'm going to teach the young ones who are aspiring to become actors. I'm going to give them some tips of how to become great actors. First of all, you have to understand that you are an actor. The moment you proclaim yourself to be an actor, you are an actor. Nobody will come from anywhere and tell you that you are not an actor. You've called yourself an actor. You must stand firm and believe that you are that actor you call yourself. Nobody will say you are not an actor. So now, who is an actor? That is the question. An actor is someone who portrays characters in a movie, in a drama, whether television, movie, or stage. As long as you are portraying a character, you are an actor. Portrayer in the sense that you pretend to be somebody else. You put yourself in another person's shoe and behave like that person. What are the characters we're talking about? We're talking about some emotional characters, like maybe you want to act a madman, you want to act a drunkard. You want to act different mannerism, different kind of attitude. You want to act a big man. You want to act a poor man. You want to act a, a wicked man. You want to act an assassin. You want to act in, as a killer. You want to act like a lover boy. All these are the characters we're talking about you're going to portray as an actor. You must learn how to pretend to be another person that is acting for you. And that is what makes you an actor. Now, how do you get started? That is the question. As a matter of fact, there is what we call inspiration. You must have an inspiration. How do you obtain an inspiration? As an actor, there are people who have been acting before they born you. There are people who have been acting in televisions. There are people who have been acting in movies. There are people who have been acting on screen. There are people who have been acting on stage. So as a human being, one day you will watch a film on TV, on cinema, on stage, and you loved it. And there, are, there is one particular character that you loved, the way he or she acts, or who, how, I mean, the way who, the way he or she is acting. It's very important. And you fell in love with the person. Ah, I want to be like this person. I want to be like this person. How do I become this person? Or how, how do I look like? Or how do I perform like this person? At that moment, you have been inspired to be an actor. At that moment, you have been inspired to become an actor. Now, the question is this. How do I get into the business? 
Good. First of all, you must understand the tools of an actor. Once you have gotten inspiration and you have gotten the way to break in, what are the tools of an actor? These are the questions you have to ask yourself. The tools of an actor is one, voice, two, speech, three, movement. As a matter of fact, just like I'm talking now, I am communicating with my voice. Without my voice, there is no way you will understand what I'm talking about. So I am communicating with my voice. I'm communicating my emotions, whatever is in my mind. That is what I'm communicating to you with my voice. Just like the speech as well. How do you communicate your emotion to the outside world? How do you communicate the emotions to the next person around you? How do you make the person around you to understand what is in your mind? All this we do with our voices and then speech. Then there is movement, number three. Movement is all about the business you do while acting. You have to be doing something while making your speech, while making a dialogue. You do not have to be flat while taking your lines. There must be one or two businesses you're doing as you're taking your line to make everything lively. You might be smoking cigarette and talking. Hey Amen. I don't understand what you're talking about. All these are movements. You might be drinking beer. You might be walking around, passing around, talking, taking your lines. All these are movements. You understand? You might be caressing, you might be whatever you're doing as body movement while delivering your line is regarded as watch movement. So that you will understand. There's no two ways about it. So at this moment that you have gotten inspiration and you have known the truth of an actor, what next? The next thing is to look for where to get training. Look for where to get what? Training. As a matter of fact, uh, the extreme place to acquire training for acting is the university, where you are going to study theater arts. That is the extreme place to study acting, theater arts. You can study as a stage manager, you can study as a stage director, you can study as a stage actor. Once you are done with all these things, you are an actor. Automatically you become an actor. But now, it's not everybody that has money to go to university. It is not every parent that has money to send the children or the child to university. Remember, you have gotten an inspiration how who to be or you want to be an actor. But how do you get the training? You do not have money to go to university. The alternative is this. There are where we call drama groups. There are places we call drama theater. The boys and girls, men and women who came together in a, in, in a group to rehearse drama with somebody supervising them. That is their drama coach. The essence of doing that is they go from place to place to perform drama on stage. So if you have opportunity of joining such people, it's good, and then stay with them for some years, automatically you have become an actor. That is the next level. 
Another level is uh, there are people who practice gra uh, drama in churches. So if you are a member of any church and you have inspiration to become an actor, one day you will see them practicing drama one corner at the end of the church service. Then you want to join them because already you have an inspiration. By the time you join them, I become a member of the drama group in the church. And then continue to practice and act with them. Maybe anytime the pastor wants to want the, the drama, whatever the topic to be dramatized, you will call the drama group, please. This is a topic we have today. And we want it dramatized. So with that, you are with the drama group. I'm practicing with them and then acting with them on stage during the church service. That automatically makes you an actor. There are other ways too you can be an actor. Those days in school, in secondary school, there are what we call drama society. If you have gotten inspiration to be an actor. You've gotten inspiration to be like Matthew Johnson, whom you have watched in the movie that inspired you to be like her. If you have gotten inspiration to watch Ramsey Noir or Natty Bruce, who inspired you to become an actor in a movie, then you need to acquire the training. If you do not go to university, drama group or church group or school group, your inspiration is still in your mind. One day you break into where they advertise seminars and workshops for actors. There are many ways to kill a rat. What do you do? You want to attend the workshop, you want to attend the seminar. That way they will teach you people how to become an actor. After that, you have already become an actor. All you need is to begin to rehearse, begin to practice, to make perfect, to make yourself perfect or near perfect. There's another way you can break in as an actor once you have gotten inspiration. But that one is dangerous. You break in into the industry direct without training. You get into the industry without training, which is dangerous. Why is it dangerous? At that moment, you become prone to scam. People want to scam you. Those who are scammers in the industry, they want to scam you. They want to take advantage of you because you do not know anything before you come in. Because you're desperate to be an actor. You just got into Nollywood or into anywhere to practice or to, 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 to become an actor whereby you don't have training. They'll make use of you. They'll eat your money, the bad ones. They'll make use of you know what I mean? They'll harass you as a woman. As a boy, they will use all the things you came into the industry with. We have the bad eggs in the industry. There is no way you don't have bad eggs. There is no sector you don't have bad eggs. That is why it's good to practice before you get into a particular sector. Very, very important. Do you understand me? They say directors harass girls before they give them roles. They say producers harass girls. These, these all kind of stories you hear because you do not have training. You just came into the industry without training. If you had gone to the university or passed through drama group or passed through drama church, passed through the school society and get the orientation as an actor, when you come in there, <coughs> excuse me, you will know 
what to do. You will know your left from your right. Nobody will tell you what to do. As a matter of fact, nobody has time to teach you anything in the industry. They want you to come and perform. Do your best so that they will utilize you to sell their movies. But if you cannot do well, if you don't have anything, you don't have any brands, you don't have anything upstairs, you become an ob uh, uh, object of uh, ridicule. <coughs> Excuse me. So, it is good to receive training before you come into the industry. So, body, so that nobody will molest you. So, body, so that nobody will use you anyhow. It is very, very important. You must have training, otherwise you're messing yourself up. So now, as an actor, you have passed through all this training. You have gone to the university. You have passed through drama group. You have passed through church drama. You have passed through school drama. You have passed through seminars and workshops and you have gotten experience as an actor. Now you come back to grace the industry, the Nollywood, the Hollywood, the Bollywood, whatever wood you find yourself, you have come in to grace it. You do not come into the industry as a novice, except the one who breaks into the industry without knowing anything, which that is his own school. By the time he stand, he stayed two, three years in the industry and been messed up by all manner of characters, even peers will make use of you anyhow. Then your sense will open, your brain will open. Then you have understood the industry. That is your own training. You use two years to mess yourself up in the industry, three years before you know what they're talking about. Your eye will open. That is your own school. Since you refuse to attend university, join a drama group or whatever church group or whatever school, society, or even attending seminars because you want to be an actor. Hey, you come into the industry. Hey, I'm an actor, I'm an actor. You are messed. So you don't do that. Go and get training. Very important. Orientation. Your teachers, your lecturers, your tutors will tell you these are the things that are obtained in the industry. So that when you go there, you won't mess yourself up. When you go there, once somebody talks, you understand what the person is talking about. You don't go into the industry desperately. As a desperado, you want to be an actor. So many people used to tell me I'm an actor. I want to come and ask him. I want to come and ask him. I tell them, go and get training first. Or come and join my training group. I will train you and teach you how to be an actor before you come into the industry. Or else, they mess you up. So after training, <clears throat> the next thing is practical stroke, understanding the industry. When you get into the industry, you have to practicalize all the things you learned in all manner of uh, institutions that you passed out from. Number one, you have to know what is called auditions. You have to attend auditions, no matter where you're coming from. Except you are an A-list actor or what we call bankable actors. These are actors that have made names. These are actors that have made names and uh, they have gotten a lot of fans. And uh, whenever you see them in your movie or in a movie, you want to watch the movie. These are the people we call bankable actors, A-list actors. But you as nobody, no matter your institution, no matter your university theater, you must come into the industry and practicalize what you have learned. That is to say, you have been you have to be attending auditions. Auditions are part of the whole thing, part of the learning process. 
the more you go to auditions, the more you learn. Because there are things you did not practicalize in your area of uh, learning, but during audition, you meet different directors, you meet different casting directors. The way they relate with you is part of the learning. So audition is the integral part of the whole thing. So you must always look for where there is audition, where there are casting, where there are plenty things to do in terms of uh, audition so that you can begin to get roles for yourself. You can as well attend the rehearsals. You might not be part of a, a production, but that the production that is going to take off. Wherever they are rehearsing, you have the right to attend or you have the right to go there and watch how they are doing their rehearsals so that you learn from them. If you are lucky, they might give you opportunity to rehearse with them. That way you have gotten a job for yourself. So you must scout, you must explore. It's not stay in one place. Because they say where you are determines who sees you. Then you must visit production places, wherever they are shooting. If you have transport, you visit that production place and be able to see how they are doing it, how they are relating with the actors and crews, how they are doing one or two things. All these things, you must learn it. That is your practicalizing what you have learned from your study place. Then, the last in it, and not the least, is partaking in production. As a matter of fact, through audition, through casting, through visiting rehearsals, you can get a role for yourself. That is when you start partaking in productions as an actor. You must go for it. You must look for the opportunity. The opportunity is not going to look for you. You must go out there, look for it, and take it. So now you are an actor. You have started practicing. You are doing well. That's great. So now, how do you perfect your craft? You have studied in the school. You have come into the industry and practicalized. You cannot say because you have uh, started acting, you, you don't have anything to do again. You must be doing things to perfect your what? Craft. You must be doing things to perfect your craft. As an actor, you must make research. The internet is there, you make a research, you begin to look for things that make actors great, the do's and don'ts of an actor, the, 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 the mm -hmm. so many things that make you a great actor. These are the things you should be searching in terms of research. You research other international actors. To research other professional actors to know how they live their life, their lifestyle, especially the successful ones. These are the research you make so that you'll be able to know how to carry yourself along. Then you have to read a lot. You read a lot of novels, you read a lot of newspapers, you read whatever is readable. And whenever you're reading, you read aloud so that your subconscious mind will always remember what you're reading. That makes you a great actor. Then another thing is this. You have to listen to broadcasters because they have the command of English language in terms of oral English. The radio broadcasters, the television broadcasters, these are the people you have to listen to all the way. Or you listen to your co-actors who are perfect, who are powerful actors, the A-list actors. You watch their movies, you listen to the way they, they, they deliver their lines. These are the things you have to do as an actor. Then, uh, as an actor, you have to make use of your mirror in your house. Maybe you don't have any 
rehearsal partner. Use your mirror as your partner. Watch yourself the way you perform in your mirror. Maybe you have gotten a project you want to act. Maybe you are acting any particular character. When you are rehearsing in your house, you face the mirror and make sure that what you are doing is to the best of your knowledge or whether you are doing it good or not. Or you rehearse with your partner. Get someone, mm -hmm. your brother, your, one of your siblings to read your colleagues or whatever your partner's line and then you read your own. The more you do that, the more you get used to your lines. You must always read aloud so that it will register into your subconscious mind. Do you understand me? So there are so many things, so many things to do as an actor. You have a lot of work to do. It's not just answering an actor and then believing that uh, you will do magic without practicing, without being in the system all the time. Then you must belong to a union. You must belong to what? A union. A union is the associations of filmmakers, the gids. So as an actor, you must belong to Actors Guild. In Nigeria, we have AGN, Actors Guild of Nigeria. There are other gids and associations. Depends on where you find yourself as a player, as a filmmaker, as an actor. There's nothing wrong in belonging to two or three gates, the area of your interest, but you must have a specialized guild. That's your, 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 the, the, first, the, the first class, the class of guild that represents your first interest. So as an actor, you must belong to AGN, Actors Guild of Nigeria. As a director, you belong to DGN, Directors Guild of Nigeria. As a producer, you belong to AMP, Association mm -hmm. of Movie Producers. As a, a writer, you belong to SWGN, the Writers Guild of Nigeria, Screenwriters Guild of Nigeria. So there are many gates you can belong, there are many associations you can belong, as long as you are an industry player. But as an actor, your own is AGN, Actors Guild of Nigeria. Very, very important because they see to your welfare. They represent you in terms of problems. They represent you in terms of your needs. They represent you in all aspects of life, as long as you are a full member and a uh, uh, due-paying mm -hmm. member. You cannot just be there without paying your dues or not attending their meetings. You must be there, pay your dues, your early dues, attend their meetings, so that uh, it will be on record that this, is, uh, this guy or that girl is a full-fledged member of the association, of the guild. The next one will be social media compliance. As an actor, your home should be social media, where you package yourself. You must be in the public glare, even though you have not made a name in the industry, but you use social media to make yourself present. You must be on Facebook. Facebook accounts, Facebook page, you know, be on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, name it, WhatsApp, you must be internet compliant. Sell yourself on internet. Make some shots, make some pictures, good pictures, establish yourself, create some monologues, put on the internet and then use it. Mm -hmm. Directors, Casting directors, 
the internet players, big guns will always see you and say, oh, this girl, or this guy is good. Let's go for him. The more you attend auditions too, the more you publicize yourself on the internet. It's very important. Then, you must have a role model. <laughs> Remember, it was your role model from the inception that made you want to be an actor. You had a role model. That person you saw that inspired you to become an actor, that is your initial role model. But in the process, as you're practicing, as you're you know, working, you might have somebody else you love a lot, how he or she performs. Then you take the person as your role model. You want to be like him. You even want to be better than him as a role model. You don't just want to be there and then limit yourself to his own, you know, uh, 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 level. You want to surpass him. You want to do better than him. That's your role model. Then you have what we call mentor. Your mentor is that person whose advice you make use of in your life. I'm a teacher. I've mentored so many people in Hollywood. So I am their mentor and they are my proteges. Do you understand? You must have a mentor in the industry. Somebody who advises you. Somebody who tells you the good things to do so that your life will be better. That is your mentor. Very important. Mark it. Then we have, well, uh, in this part of the world, Nigeria, we don't uh, regard agents, actors' agents. But in Hollywood, in other areas of woods, like Bollywood, Hollywood, you know, they, they are what we call agents, actors' agents. These are the people that sell you. Even when there is no internet, they sell you. But they must know that you're a perfect actor. You must be a good actor for you to be recognized or for you to be assigned by an agent. You must be hopeful. As in when they see you in the first audition, they say, ah, this is a material. They want to sign you to be their, you know, a member of their agency. Now they begin to sell you with your pictures. They begin to sell you what we call headshots, your pictures. And what we call resumes. Resume is uh, it's like your CV. All the things you have done, all the training you have passed through, all the the auditions or whatever, the, the contacts you have made in the industry, the films you have made, the directors, the producers, the company. All these things will be registered in your resume. Then with your headshot, they will post it on their website. That is to say, they are selling you as an actor. So whatever job you have, whatever job you got, they will take 10% of your fee. That is the work of an agent. But here in Nigeria, I don't think... Uh, some people have talked about it. I have even talked about it. Because when I trained all my boys, I... I wanted to open what, what is called SASA, that is uh, the old students uh, you know, association, whereby I'll be managing their talents. So you know Nigerians, they want to do their own thing. But in America, even the A-list actors, even the big actors, they belong to agencies. They even go to auditions, they go to read. Don't mind the people here, they say, I don't go to audition. Because before they finish the film, or before they do the audition, they don't know the people they want to use. That is rubbish. You don't say that. It's an opportunity for you to go and exhibit your talent. When you go there, other people are seeing you. You're making friends. You're getting to know people. They'll take you. They'll take your pictures. They will reserve, even though you don't have a role to play in that particular story, but you are a good actor, they are putting it somewhere. Next time they will call you for another job. 
That's the sense of going to audition. It's not that uh, when you go to audition immediately, you're going to get the role. You're not going to get the role immediately. Maybe they're looking for three or four characters, or actors to portray particular characters. And you find out that 100 or 200 people attended the audition. They are looking for how many people? Four or five people. But there's nothing wrong in attending that audition. It's a communication center. If the auditors do not see you, there are other people who can see you in that audition and make use of you subsequently. So don't run away from auditions, you girls and boys. It is your duty. It's part of learning process. It's a learning process. You go there, you learn. Act like this for me. Act like this for me. Act like this for me. As a matter of fact, there are different segments of, of, of auditions that you want to know as an actor. Sometimes the auditors want to use what we call interactive moment or interactive audition. What is interactive? They don't give you anything to read. They will engage you on speak, on talk. They engage you on discussion to know how good you are in delivering English or emotions and uh, how bold you are as an actor. Interactive. Once you prove yourself to be good, they've already marked it. Every other thing you came to do there is second group. That is an interactive. There's also what we call spur of the moment, code reading. Code reading is that, well, at least if they have about a thousand people to pass through the audition, they'll give them the script, unprepared. So if we don't know how to read, if we don't know how to you know, express yourself at that moment, you mess up and they collect the script from you. You go. You say you fail audition. Spur of the moment. Yeah, they give you a script. See, yeah. Read, 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 read. You have, they don't even give you one minute to go through the script. Read immediately. If you are not educated, if you don't know how to read, you mess up. That is called spur of the moment, code reading. There are also what we call sites. They give you sites of the, of the, of the script to go and read. Maybe take five minutes, mm -hmm. take three minutes, take whatever. Give everybody, go and read and come and then deliver. That one is very easy. It's for you. If you are a good actor, at that moment you can express yourself. Mm -hmm. Then the code reading too, if you are a good actor, you can always survive it. But they are using that one to, you know, kind of a preliminary stage to get people out of, out of the way. Then they will not call it, they will make what we, they'll do what we call a call back. They will call you back to now read those of you who made the first day. So, spoil the moment, very important. That's why you should always read. Read novels, read uh, whatever you can read to have command of words. So that when you see any word in the paper, you would do not begin to think of what this word is all about. But the more fact, like I said, sites, they give us some pages of the, of the script to go and read and come back. When you come back, they'll ask you to deliver. If you're still a useless person where no sabi read, you will still make mistake. Sorry to use that word. There are also what we call improvisations. Improvisations is this. When you come, they will just tell you one or two stories to, to deliver. They tell you one or two stories to deliver. You come back home and you meet your wife on the bed with uh, another man. So how do you react to that? The story don't start. So there are many ways to do audition. So all these are learning processes that is meant for an actor to learn. The A-list actors in Hollywood, they go to auditions to read. You must read. If you do not read, oh, there are good, good actors. They have choices. They have so many actors they want to give a particular role. 
maybe they want to give it to uh, uh, Schwarzenegger, they want to give it to uh, Rambo, they want to give it to Dolph Lundgren, they want to give it to Jackie Chan, they want to give it to BU, they want to give it to Samo Hong, they want to give it to all these guys. These are big actors. They can fit into that role. But what, why do they call them to come and read? They want to get the best out of that character. Not here, we'll do the casting. But they have the same script. Do this, do that. There's nothing wrong in that doing table casting because you have known who you want. But that person must fall into the scheme of things. He must fall into the scheme of that character. That role. Very important. Don't play with it. So that is it. You must be an actor. Nobody will say you are not an actor. You are not an actor as long as you proclaim yourself to be an actor. Then you must package yourself. You must package yourself as an actor. You must always look good. The little money you have, you utilize it to buy good clothes. You know, maintain your, your lifestyle, your appearance. You know what I mean? You must look good all the time. Good hair cords, good clothes, good shoes. Whatever. Depends on the money you have. But with the little you have, you can still package yourself. If you have money, you buy a car. If you don't have money, you can use special drops. You can use whatever you want to use to package yourself. <laughs> you must package yourself. Very important. Well, it is choice. If you don't have money, I don't know how you feel. But try it, sure. Because they say it is here and not appearance. Everything is here and not appearance. Judging by your appearance, you must come out there. Some of you will just go there and disappoint them. You must burn your bridges. You must burn your boat to face the audience, or else you die. That's it. Burn your bridges. Get there always. They say where you are determines who sees you. The next thing is this, you must be physically fit as an actor. You must be physically what? Fit! No matter the role you play, you must be physically fit. Go to gym, go to aerobics, go to the field, go to the stadium, go to anywhere that are doing training or exercise. Because go and eat it. Because they say exercise is like food. You eat it the way you eat food. It will help you a lot as an actor. Personally, I do martial arts. So martial arts gives me the opportunity to be in different kind of training, different kind of body movement. If I don't want to do stretching, I'll do walk, I'll do jog, I'll do skipping, all manner of exercise to keep myself fit. And also for mental and physical work, alertness. That is the only way you can survive as an actor. Not when you carry port belly, be like our police. They will carry port belly, carry gun. When they collect gun from you, you are done. So as an actor, you're playing a fine boy. You must look good. You're playing a fine girl. You must look good. You're playing a father. No matter how your structure is, but once you are into exercise, you, you always look smart in whatever you're doing, mentally. Physically, very important. That's why you must be in training always as an actor. If you don't know where to go, come to me. I will train you. I will train you in physical activities so that you always look sharp and look good, no matter your age. Yes.
then the next thing is this. Once you have made it as an actor, you have become a list actor. Now your 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 the producers are lining up to make use of you in their films. You are now a bankable actor. <laughs> you are now having a debt or debts for producers. Has he got a debt for you? Has he got a debt for you? Now you're waiting for his debt when he will be free to appear in your movie. So that time the money will now begin to flow in abundance. You become a millionaire, if not a billionaire. Then all those monies that are coming your way, how do you manage them as an actor? That is what we call financial managers. You have to get a manager for yourself who manages you and your finances. Who helps to invest or to broker a business where your money will work for you. Investment. Different places of investment. Then it is now that your it is then that your money will start working for you. Otherwise you will flex it. Big boy, hey, big car, big deal, big that, champagne, club, all these things. Before you know it, the money's go. But when you do investment, begin to invest your money in things that will bring returns on investment. Returns on investment. ROI. They'll be returning money from different aspects of your investment. That makes you more bigger. And for the very last time, you must invest into the sector that made you what you are. What is the sector? The film industry. How do you invest? Put up a structure. Buy systems. And they have you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? People that will scout for you. Buy systems on the extreme, not really small, small systems. So. What is the biggest distribution channel for, so for movie? The cinema. Then recently, the Netflix. And these people, they don't take low budget movies. They take big budget movies, cinema, and Netflix, Amazon, some online streamers. They take big budget movies. So the structure you're going to create as a filmmaker to pay back to the industry that made you is to get the extreme structure. Have a production house. Facilitate it with facilities houses where you get the extreme cameras, the extreme editing facilities, special effects, all manner of things that we need to do a high budget movie. Store them. Then begin to shoot your own films to create more talent and to bring more actors up. We cannot make all this money, go and invest in other things and then leave your film industry. It's very bad. Don't buy local facilities where you shoot film for YouTube. Buy the, the facilities that can make cinema jobs. Buy facilities that can shoot Netflix jobs. Buy facilities that can make Amazon jobs. Buy facilities that can make whatever streaming, the biggest streaming on the world. That is the only way you can give back to the society, to the industry that made you. Why you have already invested in other sectors, making money for yourself as an actor. You are still acting, no, but other, your money is working for you here and there, bringing returns, so that by the time you retire, you have money 
to fall back on. You have money to look after, to take care of your retirement. You don't even have to retire because your money is working. But physically, if you want to, you don't want to participate again, your money is still working. You give back to the society, give back to the needy, give back to the motherless babies, give back to people that need help. That is what God made you to be. You use your resources to facilitate the society. Do you understand? Use what you have to serve humanity. There's one added somewhere, one right up. I used the God gift to facilitate the society. Watching God give you, use them, take care of the society. Take care of the church, take care of the needy, take care of the motherless, take care of the destitute, take care of everybody that needs help. Take care of your family. So that by the time you leave, your legacy remains. It's very important. Very, very important. So as you watch this film, or as you watch this video, keep jotting down all that I've said and make it your life pattern. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Remember, my name is Nati Bruce, actor, producer, director, filmmaker, stunt mm -hmm. coordinator, martial artist, martial art actor association of Nigeria. Man, bless you. Okay, give me a one here. May a light on. You guys are looking beautiful, baby. <laughs> so man, you know what to say, have you? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> Rita, you're looking like Angelina Jolie, baby. <laughs> Are you here, Jennifer Lopez, man? And this is my uh, what, Rihanna, no, no, Rihanna. Um, uh, Latifa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Latifa, man. Rita, uh, let's go. Let's go. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Are we there? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, I never begin shoes, you know. Oh, okay. Mickey, what's up, man? You're there. Okay. Come on, I don't know, sir. Cut, cut, cut.